When Governor Ralph Northam told Virginia's superintendents to come up with a plan to get children back in the classroom, he cited a decline in academic performance during virtual learning. Now we know just how much Central Virginia students have been impacted. CBS 6 problem solver Laura French obtained failure rate data for more than a half a dozen local school systems, and some of the numbers are startling. This Mechanicsville Elementary fifth grader was among the 40% of kids who attended school virtually in Hanover County in the first quarter of this school year. She has an autoimmune disease. Um, and there's the health risks outweigh the benefits of having her in an actual school building. While Mary Dyer's other daughter began her freshman year at Atley High School in person, along with 60% of her peers. So comparing the face-to-face -face versus the virtual learning environment, um, without a doubt, the challenges have been much greater for the online virtual environment. And the Virginia Department of Education says those challenges extend throughout the Commonwealth. This shows um, that that the vast majority of school divisions are seeing a high percentage of students that are failing two or more classes compared to last year. 40 out of 132 school districts surveyed by the Virginia Department of Education ranked failing students as the biggest issue with remote learning. What we know now and what we're learning more is that uh, there are some students who are being impacted negatively uh, by the, the, the situation that, that we're in. We know that students that are learning in person uh, and getting a more traditional experience are uh, able to do so safely. Which prompted Governor Ralph Northam to issue what he called marching orders Friday to superintendents across the Commonwealth. I expect every school division to make in-person learning options available in accordance with the guidance. They also need to plan for summer school options. All divisions must make those options available by March 15th. Our children need to catch up to be ready for learning in the fall. Under the Freedom of Information Act, CBS 6 requested failure data from seven area districts, and we compared the first quarter of this year to the previous one. Like 41 other divisions surveyed, Richmond Public Schools has remained fully remote. The already struggling district that had 10 percent of students failing two or more classes last year more than doubled that number this year. I'm not surprised that we have um, high rates of children failing. Mary Gresham would know that as a former RPS educator and mother. We have struggled. And when I say we, I'm talking about um, parents, I'm talking about children, I'm talking about teachers. Um, the last year has been a struggle. Um, we were forced to do things that we had never done before in our lives. Two of the three of her kids have struggled with virtual instruction and they're not alone. RPS reported to CBS 6 that one in four of their elementary students or five times as many failed two or more classes in the first quarter of this year compared to last. But then Tuesday said that figure incorrectly included kids that received an N or needs improvement on their report cards. Meanwhile, one in seven middle schoolers failed two or more classes, which was a 50 percent jump. And a quarter of RPS high schoolers are still failing. It it takes a lot to do what, what teachers had to do last year. Children may not have been successful for whatever reasons. It's not just because of um, the teacher. A lot of times, and I know this to be um, a fact in Richmond, it has to do with resources at home as well. Overall, students failing two or more classes has doubled from first quarter last year in Henrico and Chesterfield, more than doubled in Powhatan and Amelia, and more than tripled in Louisa. And of the districts surveyed by the Department of Education, close to two dozen reported a more than 30 percent increase in middle and high school students failing two or more classes this year compared to last. The data is clear uh, that, you know, students are facing significant mental health issues. Uh, students are, are facing academic learning loss, as we've been discussing today. And uh, our guidance that was released earlier this month details that when strong mitigation strategies are in place, 
schools have been able to open quite safely. Hanover is one of those counties and among 15 school systems surveyed that's offered in-person instruction throughout the year. It's also the only county in our area that has not seen an overall increase in failure rates. 26% less kids failed in the county, but that's with adjustments to its high school scheduling. Mary Dyer's girls are both home excelling virtually this quarter to further mitigate the risk for her fifth grader who suffers from type 1 diabetes. It seems ridiculous that there are students gathering in the school building to wrestle for winter sports. How do we explain to our kids that they need to distance um, you know, at least three feet and it's pounded into their to into them all school day, but then when the bell rings and they can go into a locker room and um, then go out on a mat and wrestle or, you know, in a herd um, around a basketball. The PTO president fears that could delay kids like hers from returning to the classroom where they want to be. The longer that goes on, the longer it's going to be before our other children um, who are immunocompromised or their family members and, they're, and that's why they're online before they can safely return to the school buildings. Experts say the data shows that young learners need to make that return first and all learners may need a little extra leniency. I think in, the, in this environment, the, the main thing to focus on is what are students learning and how do we know what they're learning? And I would, I would defocus the, the efforts on, uh, you know, whether this assignment was in exactly on this day at this moment. I think that we've just got to give a lot of people grace during this time. But at the end of the day, um, we need to look at the human side of this. Before we worry about what the data says, we have got to make sure that we offer grace for our children, for our teachers, you know, for our school division period. The Virginia Department of Education is launching a work group on remediation recovery. Dr. Lane says each school system will devise a plan that best suits their district. Further detailed data on WTVR.com. Working for you, Laura French, CBS 6 News.